You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey, YNR fans, we have got some super exciting spoilers for next week. Tomorrow, as usual, I'll have your full roster of weekly spoilers dated for every day of the week. But for now, I have huge, huge spoilers, four of them to whet your appetite. This is Belinda from Soap Dirt, and we've got so much to talk about. We've got spoilers for Lily's return, Jordan's final desperate, violent move, Nikki and Claire, and the big thing is what Phyllis is doing with Nick in her hotel room. Please click subscribe if you haven't, and now let's dive right into this. Lily Winters is going to bust those cheaters. So Lily walks into Daniel's condo with a bag of groceries, and she is completely shocked to see her boyfriend, Daniel Romilotti, playing house with Lucy Romilotti and Heather Stevens. They are all sitting at the table, having a meal together, looking very much like a happy little family. Lily is shocked. She freezes. She just stares. Lucy gives her a little wave. To me, it feels kind of snarky. I know you can't see a wave as snarky, but we all know that Lucy's happy about this. Daniel looks completely stunned, and Heather looks like she's angry that Lily interrupted their happy little family meal. Clearly, neither Daniel nor Devon Hamilton told Lily the truth before she came back to town. Lily thought she was coming home for a reunion. She was clearly planning to cook for him. And there he is with his ex and his daughter looking just like he's moved on with his life, which he has. I expect Daniel to try and cover by some time until he can talk to Lily alone. I personally hope she throws down the bag, stomps the groceries, chews him a new one, fires them both. But I'm betting he's going to try and cover and, you know, have this blow up in private. We'll see. Remember, Daniel told Devon that he and Heather weren't going to bang again until he cleared things up and officially split from Lily. But Heather looks like she's there for breakfast. They are drinking coffee in the scene. And to me, that implies breakfast. And her being there for breakfast further implies she might have stayed over. And of course, Lucy is smug about this because she wants her parents back together and Lily out of the way. All right. The next thing to talk about, I am going to save the best for last, just by the way, because I'm excited about it. So next we have Nikki and Claire. They're hanging out at the ranch, just the two of them. And Nikki's telling her that she's just not up to telling her any stories tonight. Nikki's been kind of giving her some family history and just stuff like that. Claire asks her if she'll tell her the legendary story of how Nikki Reed met Victor Newman. So I wonder if Granny is going to tell the new Newman that she was once a stripper. I'm guessing that Claire probably already knows. I think Jordan already told her. Jordan definitely knows because remember, she's been calling and playing that burlesque music to torment Nikki. I am just very curious how much Nikki will tell her granddaughter, you know, unless she offers to give her some pole dancing lessons or something. I'm kidding. I would actually like to see Nikki giving Claire piano lessons, Victoria giving her writing lessons, and Victor teaching his newest grandkid to play chess, maybe to box. And since Claire mentioned talking to Adam, I'm super excited to see that. Not sure there's any good lessons she's going to learn from Adam Newman, though. All right, now we are going to talk about the second most exciting spoiler that I have for you. This is about the final showdown with Jordan. We've got Michael Baldwin and Victor Newman hanging out, as one does, behind a building at the loading dock in a grungy alley. Maybe they'll find some cans of gas there to fuel up their cars. That was the most preposterous thing that I've ever seen, is that she found a full can of gas. Ridiculous. Anyway... Michael tells Victor, don't make me a liar to my wife. No heroics, no surprises. I promised Lauren I'd be home in a couple hours safe and sound. And Victor is comforting Michael and says, Lauren's got nothing to worry about. Okay. You know, he always likes to say, okay, even when it's not okay. And then there's a hand with painted nails holding a big old handgun. Jordan walks up on them, pulls off her hat and wig, throws them down. Michael looks stunned. Jordan is holding them at gunpoint. 
the whole thing that started this retcon plot with the invented character of Jordan Howard was her supposedly out to avenge her sister Eve Howard, who is obsessed with Victor, and he supposedly broke her heart. She was mentally ill. She was unhinged. And then Jordan target, targeted Nikki because she said Eve felt like she took Victor from her, but realistically, Victor was with somebody else when Eve Howard came to Newman Enterprises to be a secretary. He was with his first wife still. But whatever, it's just Josh Griffith's sloppiness. I really hope this scene is the end game, and she she is arrested or killed next week. I am worn out on this. Jordan killed Seth. She burned down Victoria's house. And yes, by the way, I do know it's on not on the Newman Ranch. I misspoke. I was thinking about the Tack House, I guess, where Nick killed Ashlyn Locke. I know there's a few houses on the Newman property, but yeah, that one is not one of them. Sorry about that. Thank you for the comments. I always appreciate you guys correcting me. I'm not too good to uh, to be reminded that I made a mistake and I will make mistakes. I'm human. Anyway, either way, Victor still should have had security at Victoria's house because the plan was to lure Jordan there. For what reason? To let her burn down the house? I don't even understand that plan. If they weren't going to try and trap her at the house, why tell her that Claire was there? Anyway, I hope this scene is the end of the villainess. And now let's get to the big, big, big spoiler that I was really excited to tell you guys about. We got Phyllis Summers in her robe in her room at the GCAC. She's feeling sorry for herself. Guess who's there? Nick the Stick. Yes, he is with his ex. Don't know why, but he's there. And Phyllis is telling him that it's difficult to be the person that her kids want her to be. And she says, at the end of the day, I just feel alone. And then she plants a kiss on Nick Newman. I've got so many thoughts about this. I mean, I hate to infect Nick with Phyllis's crazy again, but if it means the end of the big, you know, musician bug and red triangle, go ahead, bring it on, I guess. And Phyllis talking about how hard it is to be who her kids want her to be. They are not asking her to be Mother Teresa. They are asking for her to stop forcing herself on Danny, who has made it clear he doesn't want her and she's almost, you know, low-key assaulting him every time they're together stop plotting stop scheming don't fake your death again be a semi-normal person for a few days how hard is that well judging by the words that phyllis is using i guess it's really hard for her and i wonder if nick is so lonely himself that he's gonna lean into that kiss realistically he should push her back and run away fast you know, I mean, if he does, though, who knows what Phyllis will do next? She may rent a car and go try and run cricket down again. I've been cheering for Nick and Sharon reunion, but, you know, we need to put Sharon on the back of milk cartons in Genoa City because she has not been seen since she was asked about Connor's OCD. And then before that, when somebody else asked her some random question, it's it feels like they dropped her to recurring without telling us. Am I right? She's nowhere to be seen. That is all the spoilers I have for right now. And of course, I'm going to have your full weekly spoilers tomorrow. So definitely comment. What do you think about this Phyllis and Nick thing and Jordan having them at gunpoint? What do you think about all that? Drop your comments. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And definitely come back soon. And as always, it is Belinda from Soap Dirt. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more.